Mass exodus at Oklahoma? Sooners losing all kinds of key players. Nah, not really. That seems to be what articles that I've seen come out, especially some from the major publications about Oklahoma over the last few days. But it doesn't really set in reality because the problem is, is most people aren't actually paying attention to what's happening. So there were a couple of key losses in the transfer portal. We're going to talk about that. Let's dive into day one of the portal, who we lost, who I'm shocked we didn't lose, and any of them that made sense and didn't. We'll break down each one of those. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. Y'all know we always talk a lot of college football and OU football here, so please do me a favor. Hop in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on some of these players. I've seen some of your, all your comments or whatnot. I do read about 99% of them. I just don't get to comment on all of them. And I noticed there was a trend in some of the comments from a lot of you. Big statements on how we're going to field a team, which I knew was sarcasm, but anyway... And we're losing a lot of depth and we're going to be struggling, blah, blah, blah. No, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of players leaving. So far we have 10 and I'm going to be honest. I anticipate at least five more people hitting the portal, at least five. Now, do I sense that we'll get guys that are starting caliber for this team for this one? Nah, I don't sense that, but we will lose a few other players that feel like key players, but I'll explain why they're not. And so let's talk about the ones first off who left that may be of some importance. First off, Dylan Gabriel. And we gave him his own video yesterday because yesterday he deserved it. He's one of those players that brought us a lot of hard work, moxie and leadership when we needed it most. We had you know, we've we've turned over over 95 percent of the last regime's players. We're we're, we're down to like the, the last five, basically. And so because of that, this team looks completely different than it did two years ago, even three years ago. And so Dylan Gabriel came in and helped give us stability. And so him leaving honestly did shock me this early. I anticipated he'd stick around for the bowl game, then go to the portal. But it sounds like he's got an opportunity to go to a program that's going to pay him more than he would make as an undrafted free agent in the NFL. And so because of that, I, it makes sense for DG to hit the portal now because Based upon, you know, practice reports and kind of what we saw against BYU, Jackson Arnold might be that dude. Like his first real situation, we had to come in and there was actual adversity. I mean, the game was still close. He was able to take a play, recognize that, you know, the options that he had in said play, make the adjustment, make the change and boom, strike on the play and get that first down to Farouk. That to me told me one thing. He's probably ready. And the concern with the, OC in the setup. Nah, he's already basically shown excitement about getting Latrell and Joe John Finley because those are guys that worked with him in practice. They're the ones that was next to him working with him and DG in the quarterback room. So that one was a little surprise, but it makes sense why it happened. Smothers was the only one that really surprised me. But at the same time, the tea leaves were there. And let me explain why the tea leaves were there with Smothers. At one point in fall camp, he left. That was the reports that was coming out. I saw it all over social media at one point. I was just like, oh, interesting. And so he bounced, came back. And so if he did end up leaving, going back to North Carolina, coming back and decide to stick around for the rest of the year, we saw him in a few snaps, not a lot of snaps. So you look at the snaps for Dylan Smothers. He had 33 snaps total for the entire season. He played in four games. So he didn't really get to play a lot. And with the offensive struggles in the run game, I totally would understand him thinking, look, we're struggling here. Let me get the opportunity to go. And because in practice, the way they practice wasn't, you know, reflecting on the field. I'm assuming they're like, nah, we're not going to even do that to you. And so some others decides he probably is going to go back home. I sent him back at one of the North Carolina schools, North Carolina State, UNC, something like that, where he's back at the crib, which is usually what happens when guys transfer out. Like Nate Anderson right now, he is uh, set to go, I think he's predicted to go to SMU. And besides that, the rest of the guys on this roster, rest of the 10 dudes that left, Marcus Major, Reggie Grimes, DJ Graham, Marcus Hicks, Llewellyn, Tywee Walker, they're going for opportunities. Like Tywee made sense too because 
He was wanting to go and play. He's going to get the opportunity to actually play somewhere, right? And get on scholarship. He wasn't on scholarship here. And there's a few people on social media ask questions. How is he on scholarship? And Gavin wasn't on scholarship. And Gavin Freeman was. Gavin Freeman got his scholarship after last season. So he played a whole season on as a walk-on and earned his scholarship. Now, if Tyree was still here, he would have been put on scholarship in January. I'm just going to say that season would have been over. They would throw him on scholarship for next season. That's what I anticipate would have happened, right? But it didn't. So Tyree's going to go wait opportunity to not only be on scholarship, but play because that running back room is about to get thick. Think about it. You still got Javante Barnes and Gavin Salchuk. Healthy Barnes is a monster. Salchuk looks like he's now healthy and trusted Hammy. So he's running. You're going to add in a Mecca Megua who got a carry in the last game of the season, which tells me he's getting to that healthy point. He's also a walk on. Just keep that in mind. Then you're going to have in Taylor Tatum show up. You're going to have Xavier Robinson show up. Bass is hurt, so he won't play next season. But you'll have at least five there. And Caleb Hicks, who's also a fresh redshirt freshman. So you're going to have a very thick room. And I bet you we take at least one person out of the portal at running back. Just to be safe. I would like some others to stick around, but he may get an opportunity to play somewhere else. Some other body, somebody else is going to come here and look at our running back room and think food. And they're going to try to come in and take a job. So we'll see how that goes. Key Lawrence was one that I anticipated as well, because that safety room is also getting a little heavy. Key was out there. He worked his butt off. He looked really good in spots. He didn't look good in other spots, but he came out and he worked. Safety room is going to get heavy. I mean, Robert Spears Jennings got a lot of run. You're going to see Peyton Bowen. He's definitely going to play a lot. And I anticipate us snatching up one player out of the portal, especially if Billy Bowman decides to leave. But if Billy Bowman stays, we still grab one just to add some additional depth. But you still got Powers coming in, Reggie Powers coming in, and you also have Jaden Hardy. You're going to have a, you got athletes. I mean, you got Jacoby Johnson who can play corner, and I think he'd be a really good safety too at 6'2. <laughs> Yeah, you've got some beast that's going to be able to play in that secondary. And so what the those media outlets don't get is that a lot of these dudes are not leaving because they want to. Plus, remember this. Scholarship Watch got 85. We've got 27 players so far coming in as freshmen, at least, if not 28, if we add two more. I'll say this. You got to have room for those scholarships. Like those scholarships have to have a place. And so we've got to lose enough players. And we've not got enough players graduating. So with this 10 people, with the graduates, my team over there um, in the uh, Unfair Sports Community Discord, we've got a sheet with all the players and the numbers we need. Probably going to need to lose at least five more players in preparation for transfers as well as grad and incoming freshmen, especially the early enrollees. We're going to have a lot of early enrollees. And so we've got to match up the numbers to where it makes sense. Fortunately for a lot of people, yeah, that's kind of how it is. But overall, we did well. We'll be fine. We have the depth. We have over 100 kids on the roster, and we have a lot of offensive linemen that are ready to play. We got a lot of freshmen on the offensive line that y'all don't even know he play. I mean, he, Uzeda hasn't even played yet, and I think that he'll end up getting some snaps. Joshua Bates, as well as Troy Everett, is going to get a little bit of burn uh, on that, at those guard positions. You got Jacob Sexton and Jake Taylor. They're going to be playing your bookend tackles. And I anticipate them playing some of this bowl game. I mean, I I think Guyton's probably going to end up playing as well just to maintain his good old draft style, keep himself in shape. But at the same time, he doesn't have to. He's going to be a late first rounder because of Bill Beatonbow. Remember, he's like a three-star defensive lineman coming in at TCU that we got out the portal. We'll be fine. On the line, we'll be fine. In the defense, we'll be fine. Wide receiver. The ones that I'm glad didn't leave, let me point those out as we wrap up. Jalil Farouk is still on the roster. I anticipate we won't hear anything about him until after the bowl game, returning or leaving. But the good thing is, is that day one of the portal has looked very favorable for us on the players that are really key and most important. We hang on to Farouk. Boy, we're going to be good. That wide receiver room is already stacked. But you add that veteran presence with him and his route running ability, put him like in a slot, and you bring in some of the young boys. And remember, the wide receiver class that Emmett Jones is bringing in is going to be stupid good. Stupid good. So there's no reason to be concerned or worried because we're just clearing off the players that probably won't get the opportunity to play as much as they would like to this season. So 
that's me talking about the portal the casualties, things that we, that we shouldn't be concerned about. Be prepared for, for them to come in, hop in the comments, let your boy know what's your thoughts, how you're feeling about the portal. I know the portal has stressed a lot of people out. Uh, I, I wasn't stressed. I saw that we've got a lot of dogs in this place and we're going to add to it. I even saw a report that some defensive linemen that will probably be sticking around. It's going to put a lot, of, make a lot of people smile. I'm going to wait, talk about that once I get some additional confirmations that it's solid information. If you've made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love to have you join this family of college football fans. Talking a lot of OU football and college football in general. So we're going to be out. We'll talk a lot more. I'm going to probably drop a podcast episode on Wednesday. We're going to talk about all the craziness, CFP and all of that stuff and give you all my real thoughts as we've got to sleep on some things. We'll talk soon. Peace.